Hi there everyone, today I'm going to share with you a new tutorial on how to use brushos. I'm going to show you three different ways to use brushos and the first technique I'm showing you is how to create this awesome background panel and we use watercolour paper, brushos, starch and cling wrap. Okay, so I've got Archer's Watercolour 300 GSM Smooth. I've got my Ordinary Laundry Starch. It's a spray bottle. And my brushos. Now my tubs of brushos, I've drilled holes in them and then put stoppers in so I can actually use them as shakers and I don't have to remove the lids. Okay, so we're going to first spray the starch all over this panel. Give it a nice liberal spray. Now two colours for this technique I feel works best. It gives you a really good result. So I'm using a, a blue and well a turquoise and ultramarine I think I've used. So once you've sprinkled your brushes on, and you don't need a lot, and as you can see, they're reacting already with the starch, we're going to spray it again. There we go. Look at that reaction there. So now I'm going to get my piece of cling wrap, I'm going to scrunch it up, then open it up and lay it on my panel. So make sure when you tear off a strip that it's big enough to cover your ink, even when it's scrunched up. Okay, so you scrunch it up, open it up again, again, and then we're going to place it all over that ink and just scrunch. Don't be shy, get in there and scrunch it up good and pat it down. At first I was quite tentative, but the, the more messier you are with it, the better result you get. And what's going to happen is those creases in the cling wrap are going to draw up the colours from the brush o's and leave you with that really cool effect. So yes, turquoise and ultramarine were the colours I used. I love those two colours. The blues are just so blue. So for this to work, we now need to leave that for at least 30 minutes. As long as you can make yourself leave it, leave it. So I'll put that aside while I show you another technique that I use. Brushos are so fun. They're so versatile. You can do anything with them. Um, th these ones I'm just going to use the simple old spray bottle with some water in it. Give it a light spray and then just start sprinkling on whatever colours you like. I've been quite random here. Um, so after my first two colours I'm actually going to just give it another spray just to see how things are going. Get those crystals to activate. Then you can keep going or you can stop or you can add more water and swish it all about to get them to blend. The sky's the limit with these things. So I'm just going to start adding a few, couple more colours. The next colour is an orange. Then the last colour I'm going to add is an emerald green and it's quite dark. And just be careful with the green because when you do add it with other colours especially oranges and yellows, it can make them go quite brown. So just be very careful. Now I could have sprayed a lot of water on this and got it all to blend quite nicely, but I was a bit scared of everything turning a bit brownish, so I stopped there. And what I decided to do, after I'd given it a bit of a wobble around to get things to blend, was take some paper towel and just blot off that excess water. And then once this is dry, this would be a great little piece to die cut some leaves or trees, maybe butterflies, uh, some vines, anything that you like. It's, um, it's more of a, a splotchy look, I suppose. Nothing's really blended very well there, but just keep that in mind. You can add more water and swish it all about and, and see how you go. So I'll put that aside to dry. If I was in a hurry, I'd probably dry that with my heat gun. I have read where it is best just to let them dry naturally. 
but I don't really see any difference. Now, this is a card that I've made for an upcoming challenge. It's a bit of a sneak peek, a very simple card. So this is the third technique, again with water, but just with two colors. Very, very quick and easy. And this time I'm using a, a purple and a blue. And it's funny how the colors come out. They, um, they look, some of them look green, some of them look orange, but when they are activated, they turn completely different. So much fun. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is give this a really light spray, just so that a few of those bits blend together, but the rest is left a bit splotchy. And that's all I wanna do. And then you get the result like this with the bits of white in between and just a simple die cut in that panel is fantastic, it looks great. Okay, so it's nearly 30 minutes later, it's probably more than 30 minutes and it's time for the great reveal of the effect that this cling wrap has had with these brushos. So you peel back the cling wrap and look at the, the depth of color and the pattern and just the gorgeous blues on that panel. Now that is really, really wet. So you either need to dry it naturally or with your heat gun. And remember, do not emboss anything and it, you either do it before you start your watercolors or you do it after when it's completely dry. If it's not completely dry, don't start embossing because your embossing powder will stick everywhere. I know from experience. Okay, so there's the, the different techniques there. That's what that card will end up looking like with a simple die cut. This one's completely dry in that time that it's taken to let that cling wrap dry. And that would be again great for die cutting. Now I had a lot of requests for a tutorial after seeing Sandy's birthday card. So thank you everyone for your interest and I hope you've enjoyed my video. I can't wait to see what you come up with and I'll talk to you again soon. See ya.